As a boy, before he was the famed Stoic politician, Cato the Younger was chosen to sit and wait on the dictator Sulla. This is in the midst of Sulla's prescriptions, and Cato watched as people were tortured and others brought severed heads of prominent men of Rome to Sulla to win favor and payment. One day, Cato asked his tutor why no one slew this man. Men fear him more than they hate him, was the response he received. Why don't you give me a sword then, so I can kill him and set my country free? This is one of the first glimpses in the history books we get of Cato. It's likely made up for dramatic effect, but it's designed to highlight that even as a young man, Cato was showing shades of the unflinching stoic that he would become. Before Seneca, before Epictetus, before Marcus Aurelius, there was Cato the Younger. Best known for siding with Pompey the Great against Julius Caesar in the Roman Civil War, Cato is often referred to as the perfect Stoic. He lived his philosophy. He did everything he could to save the Republic that he loved, while simultaneously doing more than almost anyone in accelerating his collapse. But at the end of the Civil War, when all hope was lost, Cato ensured that everyone who wanted to leave the city of Utica could. Then he took his own life in one of the most gruesome suicide scenes in history. Cato decided it was better to die free than to live for even a second under tyranny. He opted to take his own life versus receive a pardon from Julius Caesar and living under a dictator. He recognized, as Epictetus says, that the door stood open. Cato the Younger was a sore spot for Julius Caesar, and some say his true arch nemesis. Yes, the war was between Pompey and Caesar, but they were two very similar men just on different teams, whereas Cato was the direct opposite of both of them. Caesar's hatred of Cato extended beyond his suicide, and in one of the biggest political blunders of his career, Caesar wrote and released an anti-Cato pamphlet to counteract the public goodwill for Cato after Cicero published his own book simply titled Cato. The pamphlet had the opposite of its intended effect, and propped up Cato in the eyes of the public even more than before. Cato's son-in-law, Brutus, would also be one of the main co-conspirators involved in the assassination of Julius Caesar, just two years after his victory in the Roman Civil War. This act seems like the final event in the legacy of Cato the Younger. And here's a little bit more on the character of Cato from whatisstoicism.com. Another thing that established Cato the Younger as a true practitioner of the Stoic science was his dedication to asceticism, where many a noted ascetic may well have been compensating for a pre-existing cash flow problem. Cato was very well-to-do. Having inherited a considerable fortune in his early years, he certainly could have afforded a more lavish lifestyle. Yet, on account of his Stoic bent, he ate only enough to sustain him, subjected himself to all types of endurance and desensitization practices, and maintained an excessive exercise regime. 